Welcome to unboxing episode four, where we unbox lizards, snakes, turtles, and any of the reptiles and amphibians that need new homes. They're shipped from anywhere in the USA to our location here in North Carolina to our company called Emerald Scales. Emerald Scales then takes them in, cares for them, makes sure they're healthy, and find them safe new homes by selling them on our site at emeraldscales.com. And as of this week, Emerald Scales is turning two years old. So I've been making YouTube videos for almost eight years now, and Emerald Scales was kind of a branch off that I co-created two years ago, and uh, it's been growing quite a bit, especially very recently, thanks to a lot of things like how well the unboxing videos have done. If you haven't seen the previous three episodes, here's a quick rundown. He did it. My husband probably did die. Boink. So. Oh, how's it going? Longicoa boa? I was gonna say good boy, but this is a man. But I recommend you watch the full playlist of unboxings if you wanna see all that. And we've got a lot of animals planned, so that's pretty much the condensed version of what we're doing. And uh, I've got all three items we used to unbox. We've got the original utility knife, the uh, butcher's knife, and the beautiful katana. We'll be using all three to help discover all the animals in today's boxes. I did wrap some of them, uh, but I ran out of wrapping paper, so I'll go get the rest. And while I get all those, you can appreciate these beautiful decorations I spent like an hour setting up. Oh, I should not have blown that. Also, I've got this beautiful avocado uh, pinata here, but I feel like it's just too nice to destroy, but we do have to destroy something. I hate pinatas. Ew. Okay, anyway, I guess we better start. Okay, well, as you can probably tell, I hate parties and I'm entirely unenthusiastic from our fern wrapping. Let's start with the butcher's knife. Good choice, I know. No, I have not sharpened it since the last episode. I think it's duller than last time. So basically what I do is I unbox each animal, check it out, and uh, get it into its enclosure where it'll hang out for at least a number of weeks where we can scan it make sure it's healthy and happy. If it's not, it stays with us until it is. And uh, we get it the help it needs and then it's ready for its new home. And this little leopard gecko is a very dark gecko. It's a female. I'm personally not like, it's not one that I would probably get myself, but nevertheless, I love leopard geckos and they're really sweet. And he looks good. Most often people's rehoming reasons are very simple. They're moving, they are in a relationship where someone doesn't want a reptile or whatever else. And um, because of that, a lot of the animals will be extremely healthy, which is kind of bittersweet, uh, like some of this candy, because obviously you want them to be healthy, but also it just makes you feel even worse for the people that have to rehome them. Uh, when they were doing such a good job caring for them, like this leopard gecko as an example. Ow, it's hard. Ew, did I just chip a tooth? Apparently a lot of people are really scared of balloons popping, like it's a very common fear. I don't know if I have that fear myself, but I like being able to threaten you like this. Just because you never know when one of the balloons are gonna pop. It's kind of scary myself. I'm a little intimidated and I'm the one in control. Okay, next box. I'm back in a new uniform, actually in a merchandise design that was out a while ago, because I wanted to mention that every merchandise design that was not a limited time is now available again with a, a link with a link below. I've got a lineup of the all the tools that I've used to unbox so far. We had the utility knife. We had the cooking knife. And we had the katana. Also, I had, <laughs> I had this amazing 
huge cactus balloon and it was completely filled. But in between shots, I dropped the katana on it. Whoops. This is. <laughs> I literally kill every cactus. But obviously, I need something else to unbox reptiles with. been exerting a lot of energy. There's concerns that there's a bit too much happening, a bit too much stress, that I'm not my calm, usual self in the unboxings. Everyone was trying to anticipate what it was gonna be, how I went up the katana. It's been a long day for both of us, and this needs to be a safe and positive episode. Nothing crazy, nothing dangerous. I have a wooden spoon. Three seconds! He's got a spoon! Goodbye. Evil tools. We had our fun, but let's stay calm today. A lot of people are rehoming entire collections today. And it's definitely very unfortunate to see. It's also sad, just in general, that so many people have to rehome, especially just very healthy animals. Uh, like the leopard gecko is super healthy. Something in this box is not happy. I don't know if the mic picked it up, but it sounded like a deflating cactus balloon in here. First, we've got a leopard gecko just chilling, and he looks good. He was not freaking out. Nice and chunky, and a very cool morph that I don't know by name, but I like him. And... Whoop. Oh. <laughs> a blue tongue skink. This is a really cool blue tongue skink. He's got just this super dark black and super bright whitish pinkish pattern. And his tongue is not entirely blue, it's partially pink, which uh, there are pink tongue skinks as well, but he has a mix of both. Uh, his claws are very sharp, but he's super energetic, super healthy. His, the end of his tail does have some stuck shed, which is a very common problem area. If you leave it on there, the tail can get necrotic and die and start falling off bit by bit. The final animal is a bit hissier. Just from the base of the bag, I think I can tell what it is. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite. Not really, it's a hognose snake. Hognoses look really cool. They make great pets for a lot of people, but I'm not one of those people. Unfortunately, even if I wanted to handle them, I just don't feel comfortable doing it because I have a much stronger reaction than the average person does to their saliva, which is kind of considered a modified venom to a lot of people. They don't actually inject it uh, from things. It's just on their, it's basically on their teeth and in their mouth. And uh, it makes me very dizzy. I can't stand up. Uh, I have to lie down. I'll go numb and start just kind of throbbing. So I'm, I'm gonna leave him in this bag for now, but from what I can tell, he's very upset, which means he would likely bite or chew on me, and pretty grumpy. Next, I'm gonna do this box, which is an animal that we have never unboxed before, and then I'm going to move along to our biggest box and uh, get that one over with. <laughs> gotta be safe, gotta be, uh, gotta be family friendly, everyone. This is what you asked for, okay? This person <laughs> put the heat mat on upside down and, okay. Uh, but the snake is okay. And it looks a little grumpy. It also pooped on itself and there's no padding in the box. Now that I think of it, I don't know if I've ever seen a Brazilian rainbow boa in person. <laughs> so I've done a video on Colombian rainbow boas. Colombians are a species that are a little more intermediate with slightly more difficult care than more common snake species. Uh, but I personally found them very uninteresting. I didn't think their size was great for me. And I thought they were overall just not very attractive snakes. But Brazilian rainbow boas are kind of their cool looking cousin with very similar care, but they are showing off a lot of iridescence as the Colombians do. But these are bright orange with some cool black contrast. So I've never handled one. I've never seen one in person. Let's see how his temperament is. He looks a little nervous, but not too bad. Honestly, he's darker than I would expect. I'm assuming not, they aren't all this dark. 
uh, and not quite as bright as I usually see in images, but that could also just partially be because people edit their images a lot. Hey, Brizzle, ow. Okay. I said ow, but he actually just bit my sweatshirt, which is for sale on, in the link below. Guess what? I don't want you at all now. Go back. That's right. I'm shoving you back in the bag where you came from. In reality, I'm just so... In reality, I'm just actually like really tired today, which is why this video is a lot more chill. Um, man, I mean, maybe that's not a bad thing, but you know what I have to do is open this box with a spoon. This one's coming all the way from Texas, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six animals in this big box. And I'm just gonna pile everything out. One safe and happy animal. Two safe and happy animals. Three. Four. Five. Six. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, I have three snake bags here with zip ties and a wooden spoon. <clears throat> Watch the wooden spoon end up being the best weapon I've ever used. I don't know what this is, by the way. So this is a Saharan Euromastix. Uh, Euromastix are a species that we don't get as often as others, but I always like to see them come in. Unfortunately, this is the second one that's just covered in stuck shed that we've gotten. The other animals, which I'll show you in a second, for them to be as healthy as they are, I would expect him to have slightly better health uh, skin wise and this is someone that just had to rehome their entire collection to us and so I'm glad that, to see that it looks like they cared for everything pretty well. Oh, it's it's a second year Euromastix so I've never gotten two in one. Let's see how this dude looks. I'm pretty sure Euromastix can get pretty territorial so I'm gonna keep them a couple feet apart from each other. His skin looks about the same, still some stuck shed so not great but not too bad either. And let's see what the final box or bag entails. I think it's just a ball python. I meant not just a ball python, this is a positive episode. Every animal is my favorite, I love them all. Equally, I am so tired. Yeah. Guess who's right? I'm always right. And this is a normal, most likely female ball python based on size, but I can check the sex later. And it's got stuck shed on its face. So it looks like the three non-leopard geckos all have stuck shed, which is interesting. And then the three geckos look perfect. So half of them are exactly as I'd like to see. This is an amazing weight and a good temperament, but the shed is not perfect. I see a little bit of scale damage, maybe from some previous stuck shed, but nothing that's too difficult, nothing that's too bothersome. And I think this one will be ready pretty quickly, thankfully. Comfortable with handling, which is nice, because you'd be surprised how many ball pythons are not, even though you think of them as a very docile species, or at least I did, until you get enough that are just super grumpy all the time. But that oftentimes is just due to negligence of the previous owner, if they're not handling them right, or not handling them enough, or feeding them live, or something that just makes it more defensive, more scared. And I will happily take a little bit of stuck shed on the snake, if it means that the temperament is good. And finally, the three leopard geckos. Uh, these look pretty normal overall. It looks like they might have some additional variation because they all look different and they're all different sizes. So uh, they have a very nice little collection going here. And I'm happy to be able to say that we'll be able to help them out. Big thanks to you for actually caring for your animals because maybe you've seen some other videos where I unbox not so happy stuff. So Emerald Skills is probably going to be three years old by the time we finish unboxing all these. This one is coming from South Carolina. Good shipping. Shipping improves every video. And oh my god. <laughs> Since this is the positive, friendly, no negativity, no toxicity, toxicity, toxicity episode, I can't say anything bad about this gecko. So. Be big, be proud, little ge little big gecko. This gecko is fat, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know, he's obese. He is a big man. His tail alone is bigger than my entire future. And there is a lot of extra chunk on this one. He's also going into shed, which is no big deal. Uh, they do shed on the way sometimes, which he'll need help with it, but we'll make sure to get all of his toes and everything. Look at that tail. That tail is holding just all the secrets to life. It is so big. He's a beautiful morph though, and uh, <laughs> God. So looking closely, now I can get upset. But no, just kidding, I can't get upset. 
This is the positivity episode. It's a wooden spoon. This is the essence of positivity. I don't know what I'm talking about. It is midnight. I have been up for almost a day. And I'm slowly going insane. But. <sighs> anyway, I completely forgot what I was just saying. Oh. Um, all of his toes are falling off. <laughs> Why am I laughing? I'm laughing because I'm crying. Because I want to go to sleep. But I was like, no, I'm gonna film this unboxing video. That's the last thing I do. But it looks like whoever had him kind of neglected his sheds at times because some of his toes are literally rotting off. It's not uncommon with leopard geckos, but come on, just take the shed off your toes. Stay positive, fake positivity runs the world. This is a fat gecko and I am putting him somewhere else if I can lift him. Woo! Oh my god. It is a male as well, if you're curious. He's, so he's not prego. If he is, then he's defying the laws of everything. Oh yeah! I hate using the wooden spoon so much, I'm literally using my fingernails to open this box. I don't know what is happening anymore. You know what? No. I'm not dealing with this. Okay. I need to get through this episode fast. I don't know what animal this is. I don't care. We're just gonna... I don't... I mean, I do care, but... Uh -huh. Bazoink. What is this? Is it a lard? I really hope I just unbox a mamba or a copperhead so I can just die already. I know a copperhead wouldn't kill me, it would just put me into severe pain. And probably the hospital, and then I have to get antivenin for like... $30,000 or whatever it is, and I'm not paying for that. Oh, what? It's a spider ball python. <sighs> Boom, spider ball python link, check it out. I don't feel like talking about them anymore, but here's another one. It's so there's an issue when I'm tired, and that's that my filter, which barely exists anyway, is completely gone. Of the spider ball pythons that we've gotten, this is the best one. And by that I mean it's the worst of any snake other than the spider ball pythons because idiots like to breed them because they're kind of pretty and they're kind of worth a good bit of money even if they look completely idiotic, almost as stupid as the people that breed them, when they act like just little bonobos. Um, you can see he's just barely corkscrewing, he's just barely turning over, and he kind of knows where he is with a sense of direction, but even, even then, why? Why? C can someone tell me why, please? I would appreciate it. Thank you. Boom. Spider ball python. The person that sent it, I don't know um, if they knew of the issues or not, but either way, he's here now. And I get more examples of why I don't like people. Or the reptile community. Positivity. Positivity. <laughs> A gargoyle gecko. I can't believe I'm allowed to do this. We've got three geckos in this box. I didn't know there's more than one, honestly. Um, boom, a dirty gargoyle gecko, because it pooped in its thing. Boom, a clean leopard gecko, because it has sanitation standards. And a crusty gecko. I'll start with the crusty. He has some really cool yellows and stuff that I have not seen before. I almost think I want to beat him with a spoon. Um, he also has his full tail, and it is a male. The bulges are so large, I can literally tell from the top. I don't, I don't know why I mentioned that, but male crest of gecko. Uh, also, this leopard gecko is a, a, a male. Um, it's got a really cool carrot tail sort of look. Also a bit darker, uh, really big too. And this gargoyle gecko is something that we currently have two of. And we're hoping to produce some little kiddos for you later on. This one well, is not gonna be bred. This is just one I was rehomed to us. Gargoyle geckos are a less commonly known gecko species. Their care is almost identical to Cresties. Uh, same with breeding, it's very simple. And he's so gross, he's gonna need a little bath or something. My hands are getting so dry from constantly washing, but whatever. Cross contamination is not epic, kiddos. Mm. Um, ow. I'm bleeding for some reason, I don't know why. But, cool gargoyle. Might as well do this one next because it's just been shown on the table. It has a single animal, but it's really heavy for some reason.
You know what would be really awkward is if there was a dead on arrival in this video. Uh, it's extremely rare that one doesn't survive. Think about how awkward it would be. I'm like this. I'm, I'm like this. And then I'm... I hope that none of these are dead. It's just gonna be really uncomfortable for all parties involved. We have a, a knitted blanket. I want to thank you for taking the time, taking in Lil B. <laughs> Lil B. I knew there was no one better to ensure he'll go to a perfect forever home. Although this goodbye is really difficult for me, I know that he will be happy, healthy, and safe with you, along with Lil B as his blanket. Oh, that's so wholesome. He's had it since I got him seven years ago. Goes wherever he goes. I'd appreciate if that would continue. Well, that's cool. I really appreciate it when the people like truly care about the future of their animal. So I haven't even looked at the animal yet, but so many people just send the animal off to us with zero regard. They don't even follow our instructions. They'll just throw it in a box with no padding or anything, and they won't even follow the instructions on when to ship it. They'll ship it days or weeks early when weather is deadly, and they we never hear from them again. Meanwhile, there's people like this who truly care about his future and even give things like his little blanket. And this is Lil B. <laughs> He's got a very stubby face. That's one of the stubbiest beardy faces I've ever seen. His claws, it looks like they're actually trimmed on a usual basis. That's rare. His pores, oh my. His pores are extremely clogged. Clogged pores are something that is not talked about that much with bearded dragons, but it is almost every male beardy we get has extremely clogged pores. Uh, they have these little femoral pores down their legs. Uh, that secrete oils, which they use for marking and scenting, and sometimes if they're kept on maybe a loose substrate, or if they're not bathed often enough, or if they don't have a bowl big enough to bathe, they end up getting clogged up with these oils because they harden and get stuck. If you google how to unclog these, you're gonna get generally unuseful videos on like using a toothbrush and all this stuff, and like using face ointments, but it's just not strong enough, and honestly, the only way we've been able to get it to work with these is by literally squeezing them out. So I might try and get some video of that. It's a pretty gross thing. It's pretty satisfying, but uh, sometimes the beardy is uncomfortable when we do it. But it is important because we have had a bearded dragon who was Stan, actually, uh, they got so clogged that his skin around the clogged area ended up rotting and just dying and falling off, basically. Thankfully, he's healthy now, as healthy as he can be, but other than the clogged pores, that's the only issue with this guy. They are so long. I literally was just able to pull one out, and it looks like a breed of dragon claw. It's so long, uh, but no biggie. <laughs> and uh, in the note, they said he picked him out because he had a kink in his tail, and he still has that little kink. And that's proof that even from baby stage, Beardies are not going to heal from metabolic bone disease or other kinks in their body, but he's calm, he's looking around, he's exploring, and I think he'll be a fun beardy to have around. So uh, I'm going to keep him with his blanket, and he'll be off to his enclosure in a couple minutes. Next box, we've got a double doozy going on here. These boxes are actually taped together from the same person. I don't know what's in the box, because it, do it doesn't say. So, uh, when you tape the heat pack on, if you read the instructions, it says do not tape over the red line. So far, a lot of the people either completely taped over the red line, or they put the red line in the wrong direction, so... Usually that really doesn't matter, but it's good to avoid little things like that to decrease the probability of an animal not surviving and shipping. This is a ball python. A pastel, I believe. So the weather is getting better again, which means we'll be able to ship more animals off. Which is always... Oh, I forgot there's a second animal. <laughs> I almost threw it. <laughs> this one looks super healthy, other than the fact they're stuck shut on his head, which seems to be a theme today. So, a nice pastel ball python. Pastel, for me, is not a morph I would want. Uh, they get a little browner over time, they start bright yellow, and it looks like he's gonna stay pretty yellow because it's not a super young pastel. And there's weapons everywhere, I don't know where to put them. There's no animal in here, this is... It's just supplies. I, I think we shipped them two boxes by accident, so... Thanks for sending us the supplies, I appreciate it. So it's such a mess in this room. I'm gonna... I'm gonna actually show you a shot of this room, and just what happened. Um, I, I don't think pretty much all this is trash. Well, recycling, because I can recycle most of this, but I'm genuinely not sure if there's any other unopened boxes, and I'm gonna have to 
go through the room. So be right back. Well, there's a lot more animals coming next week. I'll probably show you. Um, I we're shipping out a lot next week, which is relieving. Um, it'll relieve a little bit of time and I can actually sleep. Either way, I appreciate you watching. I promise I'm not always this deprived of sleep and energy. I promise I've been eating. I've been drinking my fluids, including four grape Fantas today and a Fiji water. So I am a healthy boy. Avocados are healthy too. This is the only one I have. Happy birthday, Emerald Scales. Either way, rawr. I, I'm, we, I want more space really badly so that we can just keep increasing what we're doing because this is genuinely really fun even if I look insane sometimes. It's much appreciated. Just you watching this video is enough to really help out um, even if you didn't watch the, even if you have ad block on it um, because uh, I forgot what I was saying. But thanks. Thanks for watching. Party zone. Oh, merchandise. Thanks for your money.